In the early days of Dota's competitive history, there were players who built reputations so fearsome they were simply referred to as gods. This elite group of players includes names such as Vigos, Loda, Merlini, and Yamate. Many of the old gods have retired, taken up jobs as commentators and community builders, or are no longer the player they once were. However, one such god continued to forge his legacy at the top level of competition, playing among and against the best, long after many of his peers stopped. He is called the Emperor, the Bee God. His anti-mage is the best in the game's history. Anti-mage, able to pick up Queen of Pain on the side. Joe now being knocked down by Super, one rush click. The tornado will die from the fall. Meanwhile, back in the main fight, Burning has got a double kill. He is Zoo Burning Zile, and this is his story. It begins in the village of Tongling, in the Anhui province of China, 2007. As the son of a humble coal miner, Burning's parents hoped for him to go to school and have a good career. But by this time, at the suggestion of his friends, he had played his first game of Dota, and the dream of playing video games professionally had taken root in Burning's mind. The Chinese Dota scene at the time was blowing up, giving rise to the first generation of competitors. Burning, after forming a team called TTI, quickly gained attention for his leadership and skills in the countless online cups. Over the next few years, Burning was among the first to prove China's relevance on the international stage, famously leading the underdog team 7L to victory in the Tianyi Cup in 2009 over the Russian powerhouse PS. However, while his own star was constantly rising, between 2008 and 2009, Burning often bounced between teams due to the nature of the Chinese scene's smaller pro organizations, which at the time were woefully underdeveloped and in some some cases outright incompetent. Needless to say, by 2010, Burning was not only a highly sought after talent, but had already earned his B God moniker as one of the best players in China. Then in January 2010, he accepted an offer to join eHome, in a move that took his career to the next level. The roster quickly became the best team in China and ranked among the elite in the world, winning 10 tournaments that year, including IEM Season 5 and the ESWC World Cup. Burning, already a household name in China, rocketed to the top, cementing his reputation as a lethal superstar carry player. His consistency, no matter the circumstances, became legendary, and his performances throughout 2010 are still talked about to this day. In January of 2011, Burning moved to Team DK with a ridiculous transfer fee of 50,000 yuans, around 7,500 US dollars, a record-setting price tag in esports at the time. However, Team DK was a mess for the first six months, posting poor results until Burning was able to recruit his old teammates Long DD as well as Zippo to the team. If the first half of the year had been a disaster, following the roster refresh, the back half was nothing but unmitigated success. DK roared to the top of the pack, winning 9 tournaments to close out 2011. As the Dota 1 era began to wind down, Burning was ranked as one of the best carries in the world. Windrunner and will Burning get another kill dominating, which is what Burning tends to do in these games. Sadly, his success was cut short following the introduction of Dota 2. It started when Team DK was invited to compete at the first The International, but did not attend. After officially transferring versions in early 2012, the new landscape would prove unkind to the team. They would post mediocre results in a few cups here and there, but nothing outstanding. I, I knew DK was having a bit of a hard time recently, Yeah, but it's still DK. You know? Thankfully, DK's reputation was good enough to earn them a spot at TI2. IG will stay in, and DK, the second Chinese team to now be removed from the international. They would end up finishing fourth at TI2, a respectable placing, but certainly not living up to DK and Burning's lofty standards. Of note, Burning's performance on his signature anti-mage at the event, especially against Darer, was so impressive that Ice Frog added Burning as an alternate in-game name for the hero. Link up, double, triple burning, and that's gonna be God going down. However, the end of 2012 and much of 2013 was a time of frustration. Team DK and most of China paled in the face of the European powerhouses of Nadis Vincere and Alliance. 
Burning had yet to win a title in Dota 2, and DK, who closed out Dota 1 on top, were not even the best team in China anymore, let alone the world. After having dedicated five years of his life to competitive Dota, Burning, now 24 years old, began publicly discussing retirement. So with one last shot at glory in Dota 2, Burning entered into TI3 hoping to close out his career in the best way possible, win the Aegis of Champions. One of the players that's really kind of stood out here has been Burning. He's been great, but what, have you, what do you guys make of the lineup in the team? I think they're going to be going in this match with a real shot against taking down the returning champions. And he's the only one remaining. He's stuck with them. He's formed this new team, and they've been performing pretty well. They finished second in their group. DK started out well into the group stage, but finished with another early exit, this time in fifth to sixth. It seemed like back-to-back -back disappointments at the international, combined with apparent burnout, would prompt the B-God to say goodbye. <laughs> Thankfully, Burning opted not to retire and went all in on winning a major Dota 2 event. Burning assembled a team of superstars from all across Asia, including Ice Ice Ice, Mushi, and Lan M. With Burning as their centerpiece, DK set out to win titles. Their first international stop, MLG Columbus, did not go according to plan. They pop the Shivas, they force that in, they drop the ult. Burning's gonna drop, Rapier hits the deck. Nobody picks it up. They don't even need the Rapier. They say we'll kill you anyway. Now Sing Sing snagged it. He's gotten the big bad sword for himself. GG Speed Gaming are your champions here at MLG Columbus. But then DK finally broke their drought. GG! Yeah. They have the money. Show us little clean side! Why did they, uh, why? They, they all why just got up and started cheering. Actually, Lamb locked over his, knocked over his monitor. The rest of the year was excellent for DK. The team was clicking well, and their star carries in Mushi and Burning ran roughshod over even the stiffest of competitions. In fact, Burning won $150,000 more in 2014 than he had in the six previous years of his career combined. His career had been a success before, but 2014 was where it paid financial dividends. His parents could stop worrying about his future and support him in his quest to win a TI and represent China with pride. In fact, he would later buy them a large house. <laughs> While their form heading into TI4 wasn't as peak as it had been at the start of 2014, many predicted DK a strong contender to take it all. Fans prayed Burning would add the Aegis of Champions to his already loaded trophy case. Unfortunately, it was not to be. This is one of the weirdest game of games I've seen in a long while because Neither team seems interested, or actually Vici are interested in fighting, but DK know they can't fight. Yeah. They don't stand a chance in these fights yet. Right yet. <laughs> 18 minutes in, VG Gaming, in the first game of the day, have brought the paddle and spanked DK. The loss was devastating to Burning. He had delayed retirement, put this all into assembling a superstar roster, and still a title at the International eluded him. Burning, already plagued with doubt, officially announced his retirement on August 17th, 2014. While he would stay with DK as a coach for their new squad, his time playing was done. Fans mourned the end of the career of their god, looking back on his accomplishments with pride, but the lingering question of what could have been. It was the end of the road for Burning. Or was it? Big God has shown that you cannot forget how to play Dota overnight. The team of Chinese retirees have had a dominating performance in the group stage, ending second despite not being a serious team. Just a few months later, in December, Burning joined Big Gods, a retirement team, if you will, consisting of himself, his friend ROTK, Lanem, Mikasa, and Xiao8. Initially, the team was slated to only appear in iLeague Season 2, but they would also play in the Dota 2 Asia Championships in early 2015. 
It was clear that Burning wasn't ready to fully leave the game behind, and Dota wasn't done with Burning either. In fact, the team's fourth place finish, which saw them go toe to toe with some of the best teams in the world, proved the old men of Chinese Dota still had it. A futile effort by Boat7, Fado next on the list, it's Big Daddy to fall as well, and BG run right over Cloud9, who look lost so far. His strong form prompted Burning to rejoin the ranks of high-level competition, and in March of 2015, he signed with Invictus Gaming. While Burning's official return to the pro scene wasn't quite as dominant as many fans would have liked, IG posted modest results throughout the year, their best being second at the Star Ladder Star Series Season 12. TI5, however, was a flop, Burning's worst placing at the tournament yet. They'll have theirs as 4.30 is the last man down. This one hurts, Blitz, and it feels so good for Secret. People still respected Burning and his legacy was undeniable, but having come out of retirement, the results were not where they needed to be. A switch to Vici Gaming in September didn't help in the slightest. Vici Gaming, they just seemed stumped from like minute five as to what to do. They lost their uh, lane so badly when they never showed up that they couldn't figure out a way to come back into this game. During this incredibly difficult time, Burning's skills, like many players his age, were beginning to wane. However, his experience experience as a player was still invaluable and he was a decorated leader. So somewhere in the first week of March, he switched to support. That didn't help either. Forcing them to fall, VG Gaming, GG is called. And at the end of that series, it, it really just is what we expected from the round of group stage, just E-Home, showing us why they are, without a doubt, one of the strongest teams in China. Yeah, things not really coming into place for Vici Gaming. The, the style armor thing, something that people with a lot of faith in, just wasn't enough to carry this through. And 2016 would prove to be the worst year of Burning's career by a mile. Vici didn't even qualify for TI6. They're onto the tier four, they're onto the base, and they're onto the grand finals. Vici Gaming taken down by their the, the, the child side, the, the reborn of Vici. Oh. It's too strong for them. <laughs> it's too strong. Burning stuck with it, and towards the end of the year, there was a glimmer of hope. Burning returned to IG as their one position carry, but this time he was surrounded by rookie talent. For the first time in ages, Burning was on a team of inexperienced players, whose potential was tremendous. Um, this is a guy who, if he had gone the path of other Chinese stars, could years ago have stopped playing professionally and just say focused on streaming, mm. he'd be well off for the rest of his days. But uh, there is that one mountain left to climb, it's TI, and so he's still here. While progress was slow, it was clear this version of IG had what it took. Burning slowly returned to form, complemented by the tactical brilliance of Q, the talent of OP and XXS, and their star support stylings of Boboka. The team steadily improved, and in March of 2017, Burning's patience and dedication paid off. This will be it if their talker is down. They're already up against Megas. No one's left alive to defend. GG one point. Invictus Gaming take a 3-0 against what looked like an unstoppable RG. Many agreed Burning was the MVP of DAC 2017, and he had one of the biggest titles of the year to prove it. The Emperor, if temporarily, had returned to his throne. His play at the tournament was spectacular, like watching a god long dormant come again. Sadly, it was the last taste of true success Burning has had, a fleeting reflection of his former glory. I, I would like to to put Burning as the MVP simply because I, I really like the storyline of like, this truly is the return of Burning. This yeah. is the, the return of a god of Could Dota. be the return of China as well. Yeah. Since then, IG has slowly declined, posting fifth to sixth at the past four premier events, including TI7. I think they're the team that they won DAC as a major tournament, and since then they've been slumping, slumping, slumping. The time of the Emperor had once again come to an end, and as of September 6th, he has been inactive on Invictus Gaming. The future is uncertain for Burning, now 29 years old and having already flirted with permanent retirement in the past, a return to Dota must surely be a difficult decision for the B-God. Through sponsorship collapses, roster breakdowns, poor results, and even retirement, his legacy has only grown with time. The night up here by Burning, one I mean, more hit. Now that the tower is gone, gone, they know that there's going to be no TP backup, so immediately KP closes in. Well, oh, but the coil is off. Mark. Delay, and now Burning, he's got the double count. Oh, he's going for the mind games there. He's doing it. Oh my god, did he actually get out of this as well now? Burning there with the illusion.
your micro and the, the standstill, hold your breath and hope for the best play. And but Boca with the chat wheel. He is a player whose name is literally inscribed in the very game to which he dedicated the better part of the past decade. His glory days of the past are what made him a god, but his dedication to climb back to the top are what make him a hero. Should he decide to return or call it quits for good, Dota will always remember burning. Thanks for watching! If you want more great content, be sure to hit that subscribe button!